Welcome to Game Woven, a collaborative storytelling collective building the world one game at a time. This week, we will be playing Hearts of Magic, Threads Untangled by Erica Shepard. If you like what we're doing here, you can follow us on Twitter at Game Woven, where you can join our Discord. And check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash gamewoven. <laughs> Previously on the Game Woven podcast, we stepped away from the dance and back in time. Nakwit and Maeve had been closest children, helping one another foster their innate magic. Together, the Verdreen and the Burya cast a spell to draw the ley line towards Shamir, ensuring that the population of the kingdom could not have their access to magic taken away from them. The spell cost Nakwit his ability to feel the sun and the sea breeze, and that pain cost Maeve and Nakwit each other. The sea has, at long last, brought them back together, and just in time for their efforts to come to fruition. So, this is going to be, to be clear, a chase between Estella Vance and Circumsuri, correct? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get you. With the hunter being Estella and Circumsuri being the quarry. So, during the chase... Anyone may ask anyone for details about the landscape, what's ahead, what's behind, and what course the hunt might take. So the quarry is actually going to conduct the chase. So, Dad, do you have the game pulled up? I do. Great. I'm going to get you. Yeah, probably. Hey, I'm going to get you. So, conducting a chase. First, say where you're going. Where would I be going? So... To be clear, this was after the flashback, right? Yes. So we're back in the a manor home. Snapped back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. <laughs> Lights go out. Knife sound. Two glowing figures. Mm-hmm. And then have, have showed up. Big sneeze. Got the big. <laughs> oh, big sneeze. Because <laughs> because. Oh, big sneeze. I presume, at that point. At the very, very least, or Stella basically is just like, all right, fuck it, let's go, and dives at Circumsuri. I think what happens is because the lights go out, you see me glowing. Mm-hmm. And now you know, hey, maybe I shouldn't be near this person. Maybe. Right. Potentially. And also because you're a vampire, you would know that's not just like light, that is sun light. Oh, I, I feel like I have a cold. Are vampires typically bound in this world by, like, sunlight? Like, is it very typical of, like, they can't we go out? We haven't decided. Yeah. Kind of. They're also reli- uh, allergic to religious iconography, so when your so. sunlight is godlight. Yeah, bare minimum, we've established their, like... I like that it's just, light. like, it's allergies, and so you're just, like, kind of uncomfortable all the time, and you're like, I don't... I forgot to take my medication today, bare and minimum, I Bare minimum, having... we've established they're, like, mildly uncomfortable around the things that usually kill vampires. I was gonna establish for you, Faye, that the reason why that has been sneezing is that we established very... Oh. Like, our first ever episode, a vampire was sneezing at, like, a, like, marriage a ceremony setting of flowers... Because it was like a religious symbol, so it like made him like sneeze and uncomfortable. That makes so much sense. That's so fun. I was like, I do not get this joke. Yeah. <laughs> so we might also leave that in for people who didn't listen to Granite Cell. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. All good. It makes you feel better. We didn't get it until two hours later, but Dad explained it to us. Like, oh yeah, he's a vampire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say so. I didn't yeah. tell anybody what I was doing. So I that's did. Yeah, correct. Explain my actions. He just sneezed. Oh. At flowers, and everyone's like, "Okay, cool." Honestly, Doreen, I was like, "That's a weird like detail." Like, it's do a weird what you thing want. to mention specifically. That's like, I guess he's allergic to I shit. Like, I don't know. I mean, know. like, I'm sure it'll somehow be plot relevant. I'm sure. I was not sure. So yes, where are you going? As Erstella, 
are you pursuing me directly at that moment? Like, comes up, looks up from the seas. I see you see me, and you start to mm-hmm. leave, and I try to calmly at least stay within sight of you, and then I'll slowly go into, oh, he's sprinting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, just fucking books it. I think smashes out the window. I am headed towards because we do not know anything that is in this city. This is the house where I have been staying. There's probably a secondary safe house or a store that Circum's been keeping. It is not too foy, I think. I think we're currently in, like, the rich part of the... Like, this is where the, the merchants live. It's a little closer to the castle, a little bit further inland. And so where I am heading is going to be closer towards the docks where there is some warehousing and just like a bunch of real low rent. It's where like sailors will share berths, like share share rooms between whenever they're out and coming back. Uh, so warehousing and taverns and those sorts of things. The poor part of town is where I'm going. And a little flavor thing as Urstella leaves and like when Lena heard the blade she would have like conjured probably like an invisible shield something that you could feel but probably put one behind um circum and Claudius two people that she doesn't want to see go down because that will bring hell down on this city and just kind of like keep someone from sneaking up on you so Claudius you probably both feel that and can tell what that is. It's also invisible, so so people don't see it. What I like is that, because like Lena is is a deal broker, I like the idea that this is a shield of literal words. Like, your words magically are making a like shield of force behind each of us. Ooh. I thought you were going to say, this is her paying them a favor so they will mm. owe her one. It could also be that, yeah. Like Probably a little bit of both, because you will owe me one if this actually mm-hmm. saves your life, and if it doesn't save your life, oh well, you know that I tried. And sure, you so... just whisper to us both, I've got your back. Uh, uh, favorite... You both hear <laughs> Lena's voice. Got your back, whatever's going on. So, in my head, favor magic is now really cool. Yes. It only works if you owe them a favor or they owe you a favor. Otherwise, it does not function. Ooh. <laughs> that sounds okay. cool. Anyway. So, well, that's interesting because then you have the idea of, like, they have to basically accept that, yeah. which means that they're entering into a bargain with you. That's really uh-huh. cool. Mm-hmm. Very contract Ooh. demon kind of well, thing. Otherwise, uh-huh. it, so, this, the shield will not protect you. In that case, um, does Circum and Claudius accept this? Yes, I think I take this for now. I think Claudius isn't worried about his own safety enough to at this point. It's hard to protect people when you've been stabbed in the kidneys from behind. Mm. Uh, so, <laughs> so, but, okay. sorry. Lena's yes. like, I can't protect you, so I will kill you. Fair. That was not how I meant that. <laughs> so, first say where you're going. We're going to the poor part of town. Then the quarry will lead the hunter through a series of uh, four challenges and or admissions. Choose freely, except that the third one must be an admission. Oh, fun. Feel free to use magic to explain your actions or their outcomes while playing. During the chase, if you and the hunter gain coins res- representing the distance you're able to gain on each other. Do the ending the chase later. Yep. Okay. So I got this big list here. So for while well, Zan reads those for the, the listeners at home, essentially challenges are things that kind of go well for Circumsurry generally. And they're, they're something that Stella is going to have to overcome to keep up Chase. And admissions are something that give Stella a chance to catch up, a, a flaw in the plan of Circumsurry. And, and kind of, that's kind of the vibe of, you know, generally depending on where Zad feels the narrative positioning is might be just the one admission that you have to do for the third one or might be 
two and two, or maybe this is a really poorly thought out chase. Only one challenge in the rest of missions. We'll have to see. Ten ten did not expect walking sunbeam to chase me with a knife. So, I know this ground well. Follow me if you dare, but throw. On tails, you're plunging heedless into danger, and I need not choose any admissions during the chase after all. Oh, oh, oh. Damn, Zad over here power gaming a narrative system. <laughs> <laughs> it's a coin flip. So, yeah. That's a coin flip. So, yeah. That is heads. Oh! Ooh, so, okay. How is there still not phased by that challenge? So, what? it kind of just had like vague danger, right? So, go ahead and read it again. I know this ground well. I have been in this part of town specifically. Like, I, I spoke, I chose this one first because this is a route that I have walked many times. This is the, just in the process of like, okay, well, if I'm going to be assassinated, I've got a safe house. This is my path to bug out. So I know this area well. And however, you are keeping up with me in a big way. Gotcha. I think the answer is I know it better. This is my city. Mm, yep. <laughs> I've been haunting these these streets for as long as I could walk. You know nothing. I think maybe something, because this is you're plunging heedless into danger on a tail. Mm -hmm. I think I had an ambush that was set for you. Like there's a specific guard post where I've just been keeping a couple of dudes uh, or like I get to a spot and I knock something and like a crate opens and two zombies come out. What does it look like when you use your power to take out these two, these two thralls? So ultimately above all else, I am a spy master and I have people who do things for me. And I just keep sprinting full stop. Do not do not pause. And like two Lunas melt out of the shadows and kill whatever you put in my way. And I just keep running. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Love All it. Right. Number two. I press through a crowd of bystanders. Follow me if you want, but throw. On a tail, you're slowed and held up and must extract yourself. And I gain a coin. Yeah. Flip it. That was not a flip. It fell off of my head. It's another heads. Oof. Okay. No, uh, not gaining any coins here, so. I'm gonna get you. How do you overcome this challenge as well? I literally turn into a flashbang. I just sprint to the crowd and just raise my hands and like praise the sun, pose. Everyone's blinded and just like stumbling out of the way, and I just keep running. Fair. Yeah. I uh, love that. This one has to be an admission. Ah, oh. right. The third one has to be an admission. Yep. Oh, shit. You're going to catch me, are you? <laughs> Could do. Could do. You have Lena's protection, though. I do. This is true. We've yet to see how strong her magic actually is. Mm-hmm. While well, Zad's reading stuff, what happened with Knockwith? like after basically being the other person of those two people and same thing with like Lena like you guys are both now in the middle of this room where people have stormed away <laughs> what with is like hot on Vance's heels 100 like like knock with is pursuing with Vance like he wrapped his vines around like a banister above the window and just like swung himself through the window that Circum dove, dove out of. He is Doc Ocking around. Yeah. yeah. He's Ocking at big time. He's what? Doc Ocking with seaweed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> flap, flap, flap. <laughs> Ida probably would have tried to follow Claudius's lead. Because it's like, you know that I'm trying to help. I think Claudius would walk up to Lena in like a feigning of courtly manner, like hold out the arm, like believe my lady, it's time for you to exit this venue. I believe so as well. Thank you. And she'll, she accepts your arm and we head out. Somewhere. Okay. I, 
I kind of picture with, with, with the brilliant flash, we just flash cut to that, and then the flash happens again, and we just see her still continuing to run. <laughs> With the with the glowing dark ox seaweed man <laughs> As we get further into the area surrounding the docks, I don't know this area well. And at a turning, I hesitate. Throw on heads, you rush and overtake me, and so gain two coins. That's a tails. Ooh. It's fucking stalemate. We're at love all here mm-hmm. so far. Can I throw something in? I have an idea. Please. But if you don't, if, if you guys say no, then that's fine. I think since you're heading to the poor's area of town, <laughs> I think that's probably where the witches spent most of their time because they've oh, kind yeah. of been like relegated to like this, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. you know, the area that no one wants to be. So I think that the reason that you don't get caught is because Maeve grabs you and pulls you into, like, an alley and is, like, that way and just points. Oh, shit. Okay. Perfect. Great. Yes. Correct. Wow. Okay. That changes what I was thinking of doing. All right. We're on the last one. This is literally the make or break. This Mm -hmm. one will determine whether or not something comes out at top. Give me something dramatic. Yeah. I leap between roofs and make a hard, precarious landing. Follow me if you dare, but throw. On heads, you gain one coin. On tails, though, you barely catch yourself. You're clinging on with all your strength, and the chase now ends with you at my mercy. You oh, said perfect. give me some drama, and, <laughs> and, and Brad was like, okay. All right. yeah, I found the one. I got it. Here we go. And that's a tails. Heads, heads. <laughs> tails, tails. Barely catch yourself, and you are clinging with all your strength, Chin. Okay. You, our Stella Vance, are hanging and at Circumstory's mercy. I think my important question before we finish this game is how much of a hand does Maeve have in the ending of this chase? Is it just that brief moment of advisement, or does it go any further? I don't want to make that decision for the two of them because it is their game. So I will have as much or as little involvement as you want. Either way, I don't have a preference. I think you took me down that extra alleyway that put me back on course and then... Yeah, I think she would have like pointed to be like, go here and you would have seen like this sort of like path that leads upwards. Right, and so that that's what brought us to the rooftops and we've been, we've been like running along them and we make that jump I feel like the the jump is into it's like a third story balcony and Cirque lands easily and then just barrels through a curtain and when Ristella lands the entire balcony just <laughs> it just <laughs> it just out. drops it just drops out from underneath you this is the booby trap that Cirque had laid in, in case he was being followed over the rooftops precisely like this. And it was triggered at exactly the right time. Booby trap. <laughs> does, yes. does when you don't sleep, you have a lot of time. Does that not sound on brand for the man uh, who fills out everything in triplicate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> What's unfortunate is that there are other people who have trick balconies who are just going to walk out on them. <laughs> 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 The curtain gets pulled to the side. I think that we are on... This building used to be one of the finest tavern brothel theaters in Xiaomir. I think there was like a morality turn at one point and a lot of those things sort of fell out of favor. But there's still this very fine building in an otherwise very poor part of town that has been abandoned and populated by squatters for quite some time, which is like why Circum moved into this place specifically. And you are hanging from this this now ledge, and the curtain gets pulled back, and it's not just Cirque standing there. There's also like half a dozen cards with crossbows that are all pointed at you, and he's holding a knife, one of the Undying Empire's dead steel knives, and is looking down with at you with a smile and says. (laughs) 
It's been a merry chase, Lord Vance, but <coughs> I'm afraid <coughs> your time under your own recalcitrance may be nearing its end. And he's going to reach down to potentially cut Erstella. If other people would like to interrupt here, if we would like to transition this directly into the next game. Oh, yeah. Yes. So technically, Zad, you get to choose the next game. I do. Uh, technically, Lex chose to start a chase, but also we're telling a story together here. Um, this feels like an appropriate time for a wizard battle or a free-for-all. Yeah. Or to do something, kind of another setup before. Maeve, you know that if, if, oh, would you know this? No, this isn't information that's, oh, okay. Uh, If you get cut by a dead steel knife and a vampire is within proximity, they can use that wound to dominate your mind and take control of you. Which is what I'm. It's like the fixing. it's like the quick and dirty way of making thralls. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I was thinking that again, Maeve is someone who plays both sides of everything because she's trying to make sure that like she is most advantageously positioned. And there's the part of me that's like, well, it's interesting if Ursella gets away, but also is like. Is Ursella going to be so devout in pursuing Circum that it's going to create a problem? But I think that ultimately having Ursella underneath their control, I don't know if Maeve would know that or if it's just like, if you just know, like we've just like heard about Dead Steel and it's like, I don't know what the fuck that is, but seeing that's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about basically just actually pulling Ursella down and maybe even collapsing the whole rest of the balcony so it just, like, falls before you even get a moment to get close enough to him. And she just kind of, like, carries him down, not toward, not to her, just, like, with, like, you know, mm-hmm. like, the, the rest of the balcony goes tumbling down, whatever, and he just kind of gets lifted on the wind down to, like, an alleyway, and then she just kind of, like, nopes out of there. Like, you, you send a tremor through the stone of the walls to cause it to, like, crumble Stiff and Stiff breeze knocks it over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's the other option of uh, knock with an interview. That was yeah. my. I was going to interject with knock with literally mm-hmm. just Spider Man's. Yeah, we could also uh, do a, a, a sword to sword between rap. knock with and circumstance. Well, do we want to end on a wizard battle or a sword to sword? Like, what are, we, what are we? What are we? What are we escalating towards here? And that'll determine mm-hmm. how this can. Go. It is ultimately technically Zed's decision. Uh-huh. This should either be a free for all. Or it should be a wizard battle. Before anyone does anything to intervene in the current situation, can Arstella speak first, though? <laughs> While I'm dangling. Absolutely. Do you think you could give us that line you said right before Arstella was knocked down? Quite the merry chase. <clears throat> <clears throat> However, I fear that you are time under your own recalcitrance is <clears throat> nearly come to its end. Uh, and he goes to go cut Erstella with the dead steel knife. Hanging there, Erstella says, you still lose. Oh? You know why everyone's afraid of you? Uh, I'm a very powerful man. I play by my own rules and I kill lots of people. You have the appearance of a powerful man. That was until just now, when you ran. Why would anyone need to fear a man who runs? And I let myself fall. And unexpectedly, you are picked up by a very stiff breeze. And, Sir Missouri, you are blinded by the like debris and dust kicked up by this sudden strange storm in the middle of the street you are blinded by the debris and then blinded by a light flying towards you as we start a wizard duel a wizard battle my apologies so only you and your chosen partner play 
So that'll be you and Ben. Decide together who's the attacker and who's the attacked. I think we can pretty easily decide that with Serpent Surrey being the attacked. The attacker and attacked should declare their objectives in the fight, if it makes sense to have one. I mean, I've got a pretty clear objective. Yeah? Yeah. For the people at home, what is it? Uh, that is to rock circum to death. Want to defeat him to death with your shoulder CV? I mean, I don't know if Knockwit can win. Maybe he's hoping someone will intercede who actually is capable of killing. Uh, 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 you just want to, like, put the fear god in. I mean, Knockwit is just going to keep fighting until one of them's gone. Yeah. Okay. Circumsuri's objective is to establish dominance. To reestablish dominance. Do you have something you would like to say about that, Pei? Hey? I've said, I've said nothing. <laughs> yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what I thought I heard, but I just had to make sure. No. I have a question is, why does Nakwith specifically want to end this person so badly? Is this personal or? No, it is not personal. Not between Circum and Nakwith. Circum could be anyone from the Undying Empire. Nakwith hates the Empire. Valid. They are anti-life. They are anti-growth. They mm -hmm. caused a chain of events that caused most of the Verdrine to leave Shalmer and Ernet. I mean, like, they they have just made things terrible. And he's like, well, if I can kill this guy, mm -hmm. that's something. This is currently the only vampire that we know of within Shalmir. This will at the very least get you a little bit of breathing room to start forming a resistance. Yep. Okay. Start right. farming. So you are each going to take turns until you've either each taken three turns or one side has fled or died. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, Let's we're playing go. for keys. Oh, yeah. The attacked starts first. So Circumsuri, on your turn, you choose a target, not an issue. So you're going to do an action and a cost. Your target then will dictate how hurt or damaged they are by your action, but you, the actor, decide the magnitude of the cost. So describe the specific ways you use your magic, both how you cast it and how it looks when cast. Feel free to interpret the action broadly. What's the opening move for Circumstory? Where's his dick? <laughs> I summon a familiar fetch trying to outflank you. I have these guys with crossbows, and Circum takes that initial rush, standing, takes several steps back in order to avoid it, and then snaps his fingers, and the crossbowman's eyes go blank. And instead of shooting you like you would expect, they literally start bodily hurtling themselves towards you. These are regular guardsmen. These are not even citizens of the Undying Empire. These are people that I've picked up from Ernet that are running at you like beasts. And they are basically just trying to outflank you. One of the things here is one of my own soldiers is hit and I fear they may not survive. I don't fear that. We can't use that one. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm going with this one, which is but civilians are caught in the effects and hurt gravely because, like, the doors start flying open and, like, a cook runs in, wielding a knife as you're dueling with these these people that I have. Just general people from the surrounding. And also these, these soldiers who are not magical. Like civilians, people who would otherwise not be combatants in a magical duel. It wasn't just your soldiers that this affected, like, like everyone in the building. Because I've infected everybody in the building. They all work for me. Yeah. So now the target, tell us how effective this is. What is What effect does this have? I think this is honestly no problem for Knockwit. He has a lot of mobility and he can fight. Mm -hmm. He can handle this kind of stuff. But I think he's got a bit of Spider-Man syndrome where, you know, the bad guy puts the civilians at risk and now Knockwit has to deal with that before he mm -hmm. can go after the bad guy, even though he could try to secure a killing blow, like, right now. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think he catches anything more than a bruise or a or a or a quick like slice here or there. But what it is is it's distracting and it's tiring. Mm-hmm. How badly are you fucking up the brawls I'm sending at you? Actually, it's it's more I was going to use Knockwith's next action to settle that situation. I, right. It basically forces me to deal with that instead of dealing with you. I love it. Hit us with it. Knockwith is going to use the action, I pull nearby walls down on you trying to trap you. What this looks like is Knockwith finds a peaceful moment and attaches his vines to like two of the walls and then the floor. And then the floorboards and the walls start to reassemble themselves around the thralls, entrapping them, even as they like thrash and writhe trying to kill each other. And they all kind of get their own separate little pod. And then Knockwith approaches and then just slams a wall down behind him. So it's just me and Circum. And the cost of this. Oh, yeah. But my own body is too frail to hold the energy and I am injured. What begins to happen is Knockwith, currently gloriously incandescent, begins to actually show signs that his skin is starting to burn from the massive amounts of energy output. He's mm-hmm. like kind of flaming himself out doing all this stuff. Yeah, we. This is the most alive he's felt in literally decades. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Circumstory. Yeah. You've pulled down a lot of the building and my thralls are no longer, are like completely useless. I don't know how badly that phases me. I doubt it would at all. Yeah, no, this is no great shakes. And furthermore, I can start to see cracks in your armor. And you've also pulled down a convenient wall. I send a wave of force at you trying to stagger you, by which I mean, I pick up a big chunk of that wall and I just fucking (laughs) huck it at you. Nice. But I miss entirely, and the spell's effect destroys a nearby home. Oh, no. This huge chunk of, of, of masonry and plaster, you dodge cleanly out of the way, and it goes sailing around you and smashes into the building on the other side of the, of the alleyway and just completely takes out probably, I don't know, like, takes out three whole apartments or something. Hmm. And it's nighttime. Yep, and it is nighttime. <laughs> and I think you begin to smell smoke. Oh, damn it. Yeah. This obviously doesn't hurt knock with at all. Physically, no. Yeah. <laughs> Emotionally, when you turn around. Now he has to decide, like, am I just saving people while this guy You could flee the battle and go to save these people. I ain't fleeing nothing. Mm-hmm. Good, all right. So knock with retort. I charge up my power in a glow of energy, trying to intimidate you. What happens is knock with starts. He stands up looking stalwart and pissed and uh, looks back at the house and decides, well, you're just going to keep doing this. So obviously you got to go. And then he holds his hands up and then he starts doing what I would describe as vine jutsu which is basically like he's making shapes with the vines in front of him that resemble like runes and stuff. And eventually the vines themselves begin to like glow with power while he just sort of strides intimidatingly towards Circum. Mm -hmm. And the effect is, but it does substantial damage to our surroundings. The building that we're in begins to catch on fire. The building being on fire has no effect on me. I will say, it's not normal fire. And you were, like, sneezing just by being around a sun guy. It is the sun. What it looks like when Circumsuri is intimidated is he puffs himself up in order to make himself appear to be the bigger man. Does this affect me? It affects me deeply. You are using holy sunlight and also projecting divine runes at me this is taking a massive toll I cannot back down from this challenge partially because you brought a wall down behind me and also because the only thing that I am trying to do here is fucking establish dominance 
I call forth something terrible and dark trying to horrify you. Ooh. I mean, you could use the fact that there are a bunch of thralls trapped in boxes in a now burning building. Yeah. I think eventually the small scars, the small marks from the dead steel blade that all of the civilians have in the room, those wounds begin seeping blood. And then that blood flow increases as the tendrils of it go from the wounds on all of the thralls entombed within the burning room we're in and come to Circum. I picture that they start funneling into his, his mouth and he starts drinking in the life energy of all of these other people in the room. And he is able to stand up taller. And how does that affect you? Boy, that sure is fucking horrifying. Well, what's yeah. the cost? Oh, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> Might I suggest a thing if you don't have an yeah. idea? I, I'm looking. What you got? As a vampire, you've always still looked mostly human. Mm -hmm. But, like, you're going all in on the whole creature of the night, apex predator shit right now. On like a full Nosferatu, like massive yeah. fangs. Yeah. Are you gonna lose your ability to appear human? Right. That's for a while, at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's probably the thing. It's not quite as extreme as the the transformation from like Castlevania Symphony of the Night or Bram Stoker's Dracula, where it's like full bat creature, but. His face gets even, even wider. It was wider. It was wide to begin with, and and like it just gets bigger, and his nose elongates a little bit. His ears go out to just absolute knife points. The small amount of color that he had in his skin drains completely away, and he's just utterly bone white. Fingers become distended and are claws. Yeah, Circum's just, just looking like an absolute beast right now and has lost that control over his appearance and his body. This is to horrify me? Yes. I think Knockwith is pretty horrified. Mm -hmm. This is truly disgusting. Earth shattering. Those people are dead, right? We don't know they're behind a wall. Yeah. Are they alive to begin with? They're behind a wall in a building that's now on fire, so... Mm -hmm. If you can think of a way to save them, they're not dead yet. Does that mean that, like, the transformation isn't complete yet? That you're, like, mid-doing a thing? The thing that they're transforming into is desiccated husks. No, I mean you. I mean, you are oh. in circums, like, like is is this sort of, like, mid-powering up? Like, I, I've this isn't even my final form? Or are you already into that thing, regardless of the outcome of these people? This is just what Circum looks like. The rest of it was a clamor. Yeah, I think he's just, like, abandoning humanity. This is always what he's looked like, but now he doesn't have the energy to oh. maintain visually what he normally looked like. In my head, what it is, the civilian, the blood, like, oozing out, like, tendrils and going into his mouth, completely irrelevant. All he really did was, like, drop his like glamour and like let his true visage be shown the like mm -hmm. blood stuff was just flare just on for it. yeah <laughs> it's just to <laughs> establish dominance i mean and also to mitigate the fact that i'm getting like pounded by sunlight yeah, and to heal <laughs> so wanted to be do something horrific <laughs> want to see me do it again <laughs> you guys want to see a dead bodies I don't know. What is it worth to knock with, man? So I will say this, I believe, is the last move because that, I believe, was your third, that was that third action move. and cost. And so that means this will be your third action and cost. So this is this is, this is it. Yeah. We're basically at the point now where if this doesn't do it, knock with is either going to die or like go into self-exile because that is such a horrific thing. Like if he fails here and still has his life, he's going to walk the earth. Like, he can't stick around for this. He's going to get as far away from the Empire as possible. You know? I cast a spell more powerful than you believed possible, trying to destroy you. 
Mm. And what he does, Knockwith lashes out his vines, and he actually wraps Circum in these glowing vines, and then just, like, grabs Circum's eyes with his hands, and just, like, shines, like, pure light, to, like, just bathing this guy in as much light as possible while he literally goes Super Saiyan in his face. We don't need to ask what the cost is for that. I mean, yeah. I'm not reading it. What is the cost? Because like, I didn't want to spoil it for myself. Oh, well, it, I just meant that I think Benjamin made it pretty clear that... Oh, gotcha. ...that Knockwith is going to do that until he dies or... Or he can't anymore. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. This is kind of that big final push. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Well, the, the uh, actual key cue for it would be, but the power is too much for me to handle and it brings me to my knee. But that'll be after the the actual effect mm-hmm. on the circle. Mm-hmm. Whatever the effect is, might I su- uh, suggest another failure, another like absolutely. Loss. I love a cough. Your tentacles go bye bye. No more tentacles. Yeah, you're no longer a plant guy. You're just a guy. Get fucked, kid. Eh. I know. That's why I'd be sad. Maybe I'm still a plant guy, but I'm like burned out. I'm like all dried out and like. Mm. You have little nubs on your shoulders. Just an option if you burning to death in a final bit of glory is not the ending we desire. I mean, burning to death in a final bit of glory might happen. Yeah. What is it like when Verdrine died? We don't know. Do you yeah, turn into the first like a time. plant? Is there just this like a little guy? Time. From the ashes think, you shall return? I don't think it's a fruit situation where like a little sapling comes back and then I get to start over. Knock with will return. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in this case, I mean, Knockwith would be drying out and burning himself out. So at the very mm-hmm. least, yeah, the vines probably burn off. But then all mm-hmm. the rest of him, like with the chlorophyll and everything else, that's probably going to no longer be green. And he will probably struggle for months, maybe years, getting mm-hmm. back. Like, it's, it's, mm-hmm. if he even survives it. Yeah. Can we just talk about also, like, the symbolism between, like, the thing that knock with holding this like magical channeling crystal thing in a very similar way decades ago Mm -hmm. that left him with like irreparable damage to the way that they navigate their lives and then they're doing basically the same thing all over again but on a person yeah it's like literally the same night that he got his powers back he's like well time to go explode cowabunga it is (laughs) Oh, yeah, is that, uh, you can tell us how this affects you. Boy, this sure would be a problem, me being alone up here, facing down, the sun going off in my face. Fortunately, this town is not completely bereft of civilization, and there are certain members of the society who understand what way the wind is blowing, and, oh, perhaps it will incur a bit of a debt that will have to be settled later, but... Shit, yeah, you're still under my protection. (laughs) Yeah. Knockwith, I think you see Circum's, like, flesh kind of begin to to crisp up. And then the words, I have your back, whatever is going on here, appear in front of your face. And sort of dissolve into dust, and there's like a... (sighs) As the light just completely fades out of the room we cut to Erstella's perspective from down the alleyway and you see this explosion of light come out of the room and a body drops out of the window off the balcony. I have a thing. That okay. I know. Get it? There's a secret I'm aware of. Yeah? So... Double checking. Hey, Claudius and Lena, where are you two while this is happening? I think this is an incredible end to that game. Table, I hope it wouldn't slow down the narrative too much. But Bree, I would ask, would you consent to playing Stealing Time together between Lena and Claudius Gork as Ooh. we walk alone Ooh, to spicy. this confrontation? Thank you for listening to Game Woven. Please give us a follow on Twitter at, at Game Woven. 
join the Discord, support the Patreon, and consider leaving us a review on your favorite podcasting platform. This week's episode featured Faye Morell at Mendari, M-E-N-D-A-R-I-I, on Twitch and Twitter. <laughs>